So, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the audience, it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be in the city, or at least the, the country of coffee. I won't deliver in Italian my speech, because I think not even myself I would understand it. But anyhow, I'm very happy to be here, and we're all looking forward also to have a coffee. Um, good morning to all of you. Uh, the coffee market has very large and many opportunities, and the opportunities for us have a human face, basically. Sorry. This, this is a farmer in Colombia. Colombia farmers now are struggling. You know that they have a lot of challenges. The, the production cost is going higher. The impact, as you mentioned, uh, Andrea, the impact of the climate is, is very strong. The buyers also change a lot of origins. So all this makes a reliable cash flow difficult to make sure they, ha they can plan on. They cannot plan on retirement. They have difficulties to pass the farms to children. They have higher cost. They have problems also to finding people to work on the farms. So can, how can we make sure that we can add value to the farmers and we can have a sustainable approach to having the farmers producing the best coffee for us? Well, basically, we should recognize that we cannot have a business which is sustainable if the farmers are not don't have a sustainable living. This is what we should be working on. To safeguard the, the farmer's welfare, the customer quality cop, obviously, and this will sustain and, and establish a strong base for sustained, sustained business, as we all have. Our concept, or what we work on, is CSV. It's called, we call it CSV, and we are committed to create shared value. This is the CSV concept. It's more than just a social responsibility concept. It's based on adding value throughout the whole value chain of coffee, from the farmers through to the employees, the company, the, the shareholders, and clearly to the end consumers also. It is, as I very often said, embedded in the business model. The CSV is embedded in the business model. The more we do business, the better everyone benefits from the added value to the, to the uh, value chain of coffee. In Nespresso, we call it a triple A. We launched triple A in, in 2003. It's a triple A sustainability quality program. It's based on higher quality coffee, uh, improving the environment and the, the farmer welfare. It's a program we launched with uh, Rainforest and at that time, and it is to support the farmers to produce in a more sustainable, more quality, more productivity, and also obviously uh, improve also the environment impact they have. The higher crops, the higher quality crops, generates better incomes for them, and the higher quality offers also, to the end, a better quality for the uh, end consumer. We have 80% of our purchasing is bought from these AAA uh, farms. It is basically also clearly based on our need to get to the one to, or two percent of best quality coffee. This is what we are based on offering, and, and uh, it was mentioned before, basically it's offering to the consumer a better quality coffee. And for that, we have to improve the quality of coffee. So it, targeting to this one, two percent of the best quality coffee challenges us in making sure that in the future we'll have this coffee. Now, so this is what we are working on. And this allows us also to establish a long relation, long-term relation with the farmers, because we always go back and make sure that we buy from the same farmers which are working on improving the situation. That's why, in fact, we are not directly linked to the commodity market, because we need this top quality uh, coffee. It is a stable long-term buyer for the high quality, and we have 63,000 farmers selling to us. And we buy more or less between 30 and 40 percent higher than the market price. This works with 300 agronom agron agronomists, which have relations one-to-one -one with the farmers, and they help the farmers to produce better quality. It's based on productivity and also, as I mentioned, on quality. So this is our, this is, for instance, a farmer who's, who's, um, who's selling his product to this added value. This is in Colombia. And this guy, Thomas, he increased his yield of 30 to 40 bags coffee beans per hectare every year. 
This also has a second very positive impact. We did a study with Crece, which is also in Colombia, and they, they came up with the results of the long implementation of the AAA program that it has secondary impacts on social conditions, the social factors improved 23%, the environmental conditions also improved 62%, and the better, obviously the better economic conditions also improved 41%. But basically this also brings stability uh, to his income, stability to be able to find always someone who will buy coffee from him. And, and this is I would say the biggest challenge we have is making sure that this person, and here you have Fabio again, who uh, has an entrepreneur approach to the cafe production. And this is what we want, is entrepreneur who listens to our agro agronomists and uh, uh, build better businesses for themselves. We have another interesting example, is the Root Capital, a, a small NGO which helped us in, in Guatemala, because basically asking the, the, the coffee producers what problems they had, they had difficulties in understanding the financials of their farms. So we came in with some, I would say, accounting, accounting uh, consultants in a very simple way which helped them to develop costs and uh, income and this improved a lot the, I would say, entrepreneurship and understanding of how the coffee farms work from the financial point of view. So sometimes it's very simple things which improves the, the life of these farmers. But basically what we need is having uh, an industry responsibility in a collective way to make sure that we make, put the farmers at the center of our model. And the big challenge I would say for all these farmers is what you see here is the volatility of the prices. And so you saw, and I explained a bit what we did with the AAA program, how we improve productivity, quality, and environment. But basically one of the big, big challenges or the biggest challenges for a farmer is this high, very high volatility of prices. This is starts in 96 where you have ups and downs every year, and these ups and downs are getting stronger, I would say, every year. What can we do for this? And where, the, where first of all, where does the challenge coming from? Well, basically, it comes a lot, as you know, from speculations on futures. That's the main driver, very short-term volatility. On uh, portfolio uh, diversifications also, the market gives false signals to the, to the, to the coffee market and speculation also. We have normally, no, we, we can kind of figure out that 60 to 70% of the commodity price fluctuations are based on speculation activities, not directly linked to purchasing or selling of coffee. Obviously, you have additional impacts, uh, the devaluated the currencies, this is the case of Colombia, case of Brazil, uh, and also what uh, you mentioned before, Giuseppe, on the problem of uh, the impact, uh, climate impact, which uh, is impacting a lot the farms, also in most Latin American countries, but also in Asia. All this is creating instability, volatility, and for the farmers, a difficulty in, in future in to see where they're going to end with their farms. Uh, also, you have the, the aging population, how children have difficulties in taking over the farms because and the, the parents are always staying longer and getting older on their farms. So how can we work? How, what can we do to make sure that we help the farmers to build a stronger uh, value chain and not being e exposed to this, I would say, ups and downs of the price? Basically, again, the AAA program helps, is one solution. It is a partial solution, it is ours, but I'd just like to go through three points which will, through how we buy coffee, help to limit the impact of these fluctuations. The first one is committing to farmers in the long term. What creates problems for them, it's not knowing where to sell the coffee every month, sometimes every day. If we commit, and it's not only us Nespresso, but many, many companies in this, in this uh, room, commit long term on buying to the same farmers because we want the best quality coffee, because we know that year after year we ha will have good coffee coming from these farmers. And this helps them to make sure that they know what they can expect. Long term relations with the farmers. The second one is 
creating innovative welfare programs. Uh, as I mentioned, we went out, we asked to the Guatemalan farmers, what, what do you need? And they came up with something very simple for us to deliver, which were these ac accounting courses. We have another very interesting program. We just launched uh, with Fair, Fair Trade, uh, Andre and Anna de Federacion de Cafeteros de Colombia uh, a few a year ago, a year and a half ago, was working on the pensions. As I mentioned, the farmers are always getting older, the kids cannot take over the farm because they don't have pensions, and they go to the city, and we lose the future, uh, the future farm and the future production of this coffee because farmers stay probably too long <coughs> and too old on their plants. So what we did was to develop a public-private partnership where we created a future saving system where people can make sure that they'll have pensions and in a few years will be able to retire and leave their farms uh, to their kids. The last one, and this one also, uh, people, a lot of people in this room work on, is investing in quality and sustainability. I think all, all people mentioned it before, innovation, quality and sustainability is the base and help farmers to make sure that they'll have good businesses in the future. And, and what I very often use as a word, it's not a very nice word, is saying that we decommoditize the coffee market. We take out coffee from the commodity market by offering a stable price, a long-term relation to the farmers, helping them to produce more, better quality in a sustainable way. That's what we try to do, to take it out of the commodity. For that, you need to make sure that you have the best quality and that you improve or increase the expectations of the end consumer who wants a better quality coffee. Everything starts with the end consumer. If the end consumer wants and expects from all of us a better quality coffee, then the added value of the whole chain increases and you can buy coffee more expensive. And by that, obviously, offer better welfare to the farmers. Here you have the this is how we buy coffee, Nes Nespresso in this case. I took away exactly on the left side the prices exactly. But this is, where we, this is how we buy it. So we started off in 2003 pretty small with this chart. Um, and the lower, the lower one, which could be the, would, would be the white one, is the market. So you see the market going up and down. And then in blue and in gray are the, the premiums we pay uh, for the better quality coffee uh, we acquire. And what you see here is that when the coffee price goes down, for instance, between January two 2011 and uh, end uh, 14, beginning 14, what you see there, it's that the premiums, as they are not linked to the price, the market price, s smoothens down the lowering of the, c of the price. So it's positive in the farmer. So the premiums we pay for quality, for quantity, and for the sustainability of their farms, based on the AAA program, helps the farmers to maintain a better price and not be so quickly impacted by the lowering of the international prices. So, I talked a lot about uh, Colombia. I talked about our AAA program. We are very uh, fond of, of Colombia as a, as a producer. They produce very good quality coffee, as you know. But we have also some programs elsewhere. And uh, uh, I just wanted to close with another example we are working on, which is uh, the example of uh, South Sudan. But basically, everything begins and ends with the best quality coffee and to be able to sell it at a higher price and to consumers who expect and are prepared to pay more for good quality coffee. In South Sudan, and this is uh, now our, our next very important project, we started in 2011. Uh, we, have, we established the first wet mill, the first cooperatives, new agronomic skills. We're also sending agronomists over the day, new processes to work. And in fact, it was la last year and this year, the first se exports of coffee out of Sudan and the number two exports of the oil is what now the small coffee farmers, the 300 we have in the cooperatives, are starting to sell to us to be able to launch uh, interesting aromas to the whole population. Clearly, um, we are in South Sudan. We are investing in this very complicated situation in a country which is suffering a lot because we feel that over there, 
we will be able to find new interesting coffees. And as you mentioned before in the first presentation, uh, good aromas, new experiences, increases the expectations of the consumer and makes the whole value chain uh, working better. And in this case, we probably, hopefully, will be able to also deliver better price and better value added to these farmers in South Sudan, as you know, a country which is with lots of uh, difficulties. So what I strongly believe in, and this will be my conclusion, is that if we add value to the whole value chain, we can build a reliable income for the farmers and in a sustainable way. And this will benefit for the whole category and obviously also the coffee lovers. Thank you.